We're going to turn now to that wide-ranging, exclusive interview with former President George W. Bush. Diane sitting down with the former president and Mrs. Bush. Diane? Thank you so much, David. I'm back here in Dallas. We're at the George W. Bush Library, and he and Mrs. Bush are going to weigh in on the news and their lives in private as the library is about to open. He has been off stage, away from reporters, in silence, but tonight... He sits with Mrs. Bush as we ask him about everything from terrorism to Iraq to the next presidential election. Mr. President, great to be interviewing you again. <laughs> Did you miss all of us? No. <laughs> well, I miss you as a person, but not as a, I don't miss your profession. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised by that? Uh, well, you know, I had all the fame I needed. I've decided to stay out of the limelight because, one, I'm comfortable with that decision, and two, I don't, I don't really want to undermine our president. And frankly, the only way for me to generate any news uh, is to either criticize the president or criticize my party. I'm not interested in doing either. The former president remembering what it is like in the crucible. Last week, the president of 9-11 watching the president of the bombings in Boston. The terrorism in Boston. Yeah. Many people have wondered if it took you right back to 9-11 when you heard it. I was deeply concerned that uh, this could have been, um, uh, you know, another highly organized attack on the country. And it still may be. I, again, I don't know the facts. But I do know that it's really hard to protect the homeland. Those who want to do harm only have to be right one time. And we have to be right 100 percent of the time, whether it be that or the uh, explosion at West Texas. I mean, it, 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 it harkened back the days where you where you become the comforter in chief. In other words, you try to help heal souls that are, that are hurting. And chart the future. A year and a half after 9-11, he ordered the U.S. invasion of Iraq. The museum acknowledges no weapons of mass destruction were found. Iraq. I noticed that you say in the exhibit, no stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction were found. Right. That's, so we're just laying out the facts, and uh, that was a fact. 58% of the people saying it was not worth it in their view. I can't remember the numbers, but 58% of the people initially said it was worth it. I think the removal of Saddam Hussein was the right decision for not only our own security, but for uh, giving people a chance to live in a free society. As far as I'm concerned, the debate is over. I mean, I did what I did. And, uh, and historians will ultimately judge those decisions. And in an unusual approach, the museum actually asked the visitors to make those decisions, too. You're given fast-moving information and a clock counting you down to do it fast. The purpose of the museum is not to herald me, necessarily, but to explain different events and to show people uh, what it's like to make decisions. Feel the pressure that the president feels uh, to see what the, how the president reacts to uh, various decisions. And we ask about the presidency and his party. What will happen in 2016? Do you have one word for the Republican Party today? <laughs> uh, you will exist in the future. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Jeb Bush. Well, that's a, he would be great. You Two know, words. <laughs> yeah, he would be, a, he'd be a, a marvelous candidate if he chooses to do so. I, he, uh, he doesn't need my counsel because he knows what it is, which is run. <laughs> Your brother versus Hillary Clinton? <laughs> uh, well, it'd, be a, it'd be a fantastic photo. I'm fascinated by all the gossip and stuff that goes on, but uh, the field won't be cl become clear till uh, after uh, the midterms. One of the issues in the party in which there seems to be some shift taking place among senators is gay marriage. We yeah. know that <laughs> Mrs. Bush has weighed in. They ought to have, I think, the same sort of rights that, that everyone has. I'm not. Ready to weigh in? <laughs> no. But thank you for trying. <laughs> <laughs> not going to say if you've changed your position, too? I am not weighing in on issues. I mean, there's, I, see, you're either in or out. And uh, I understand your job, and you're doing a fine job of doing your job. <laughs> but I, I've really decided, made the decision to um, not be a part of uh, dealing with these these current issues. For now, he's steeped in private life, a new granddaughter, Mila. So is it going to be grandma and granddad? Is it going to be? <laughs> we don't know yet, really. George wants to be called Hefe, boss. El Hefe. El yeah. Hefe. Holding that little child was one of the great joys 
of my life. I remember holding Barbara and Jenna when they were born, and there's a picture in the museum uh, that memorializes that moment. An 11-day-old granddaughter and an 88-year-old father. The central statue at the museum is the two of them. Through our windows yeah. from the back, yeah. we can see the statue you commissioned. It's the two of you. It is. I wouldn't be sitting here without his unconditional love. And uh, it gives me great comfort to know that he will be by my side for eternity. <laughs> and as the museum is opened and there are four presidents. Sure will be. And you are looking out. What are you going to be thinking? One, how blessed I am. And it's not going to be all that long uh, that I will be going to President Obama's uh, uh, library and museum dedication. As I look out, it'll be really a chance to see friends from all over the country and lifelong friends from Midland. A lot of them are coming. They said they'll be here if there's free food. <laughs> <laughs> and then back. Off the stage? Back off the stage, yeah. I know people don't believe that somebody who'd been in the limelight for so long is anxious not to be in the limelight. Each former president chooses his own path. Uh, I've chosen mine, and I'm very comfortable with that decision.